Uh, hello everyone, you are welcome to part 3 of this course, Modern Wireless Communication and Applications. Uh, part 3 is related to wireless channels, where we will discuss in more details the limitations of wireless channels uh, and also characteristics actually of wireless channel, which uh, causes a lot of limitations in digital communication. This is a clip 1. This is a clip 1 of part 3. Okay. Uh, if we just uh, go to the uh, part three outlines, so we will have introduction to wireless channel in this in, in this clip. Multi path is in wireless channels, uh, inter symbol interference, which is known as ISI. Time varying and fading problems, uh, fading uh, manifestations, uh, equalization. Uh, the equalization is um, like a technique. Uh, used uh, to handle or to mitigate the ISI problem, diversity, interleaving antennas, uh, multiple uh, antennas and beamforming, MIMO antennas, channel capacity, MIMO capacity. Those topics will be uh, covered uh, through this part three over three or four clips. Okay, what is the learning outcome after completing this uh, part three? Uh, attending all, all recorded lectures and also attending the online sessions solving uh, the associated quizzes successfully so uh, you will be uh, aware of the major challenges of wireless channels and uh, the, uh, the, that limits the performance of wireless communication you will be able to demonstrate uh, the two different kinds of fading problems uh, be aware of uh, the technologies to handle the wireless channel channel problems like equalization and diversity and also you will be aware of MIMO technology and why it is one of the major corners pillars in advanced telecommunication systems okay uh, when we talk about wireless channels actually there are three major characteristics of wireless channel the first is large distance losses what we mean by large distance means that uh, the losses which are affecting by large movements so uh, by moving like meters or tens ten, tens of meters then we will can we will see the impact uh, of of that movement on the attenuation on on the losses at the receiver side so it is called large distance losses uh, and as we uh, already uh, the scene in 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 uh, in part one, uh, when we uh, gave few uh, hints about wireless channels, that the losses will be related to one of the power uh, divided by d, the distance of the power of four. This is in in cellular network, or it is called uh, a two rays uh, channel model. Uh, also, it is affecting by the large obstacles. For example, if you are uh, like uh, walking uh, on, uh, and, uh, on street and uh, on street, and uh, suddenly you enter some building, for example, then the received signal will be affected uh, by that. So this is also may, uh, part of this large distance losses. So uh, we call it also like uh, shadowing. So it is shed, uh, the, the signal is shadowed by by large like obstacles or or like uh, large, large buildings, uh, trees and so on, mountains and so on. And then the second is multi of uh, the received signal. So the signal, uh, the, propagation, uh, propag uh, the propagation or propagated signal uh, might arrive to the receiver uh, over like multi -path profile. So as we will see them later. And then the time varying nature of wireless channel. So the wireless channel is not uh, fixed. It means that it um, uh, assume we were able to to know the model, very, very accurate uh, uh, model of the channel, and then we were able to handle this, this multi-bath problem. So we, we have like reverse action of this multi-bath problem in the receiver. The problem that uh, even in that case, uh, the, the model will not be valid for long, for long time because the uh, channel itself is time varying. So all the time, the channel characteristics can can change with with time, and uh, uh, this 
causes uh, more challenges in the uh, 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 in the design of digital communication receivers. So th those are the three major items of wireless channel: large distance losses, multi-path profile, and time varying nature of the channel. When we talk about multi-path profile, you can see here that we have like uh, three three main ways that the uh, rays could arrive to the receiver. So it can be line of sight, so the, the, the signal comes directly from the transmitter to the receiver. Or it can be over uh, like multi baths as you can see, it can be reflections, or it can be diffraction, or it can be scattering. So we have three, and the fourth one is the line of sight. So scattering with the signal uh, uh, just hit uh, uh, small, uh, for example, edges. Uh, where uh, the dimension is somehow comparable with the uh, wavelength of the wave. So this causes the signal to be scattered everywhere. And also reflections and diffraction. Diffraction uh, uh, occur when the signal arrives to edge of some like big uh, building or uh, like um, uh, in general, any obstacle in general, or mountain, or then the signal uh, will um, bend, and because it, it looks like we have like a new wave source here, so it will be um, propagated in, 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 in that way. So the signals actually arrive uh, with these multi baths, causes the impulse response of the signal of the channel. The in-bus response of the channel will be, as you can see, this is the magnitude of each path. It can be some random number or uncertain number. We don't know exactly what it will be because it depends on the environment. So we have here this amplitude of, of the path. And then we have also that time changes uh, in that channel. It depends on the Doppler frequency. Okay, and uh, uh, also we will have this, uh, th this is delta, uh, which is the impulse response of the, uh, of the channel. And actually, you can see that we here we assume that we have m different paths, but also we can uh, see here that we, th the channel is, the, is function in another time, so t and tau. Tau is the time varying uh, channel because it depends on when you take that measurement that the channel characteristics will, will also uh, change. Uh, actually, you can also use here, for example, exponent of J phi, uh, which, which means that the, the phase difference of every, every uh, that uh, uh, array. Uh, in the propagation, so you can see that the channel is is very uh, um, not mathematically complicated, but but it, it it has a lot of challenges how to handle such kind of uh, received signal which comes from uh, diff mini baths. So uh, here the description about uh, the multi baths uh, scenarios that we have. Okay, so uh, what is the impacts of multi baths? In multi bath we have actually three major uh, uh, impact so uh, it can be actually uh, in 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 uh, time domain or in frequency domain and also it can be in band bus or in the base band okay uh, in the band bus uh, the received signal as you as we can you we, you we can see here so assume that we have a received signal uh, and modulated cosine wave as you can see it here and we have one direct wave and we have another one which which is uh, it has different different delay than the first one so what happened this signal could be uh, like uh, distributing 2 by fc inside so we will have 2 by fc t minus 2 by fc tau and actually this is phase difference so we have a phase difference between the 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 first cosine and the second cosine so in that case uh, this phase uh, if it is zero 
or multiple of 2 pi, then we will have in phase. So the signal will be just like accumulated together. So we will have 2a cosine 2 by fct. But also phi it can be out of phase. So if by, for example, equal to, uh, uh, if phi equal to by, for example, out of phase, then what happened? Those two signals will cancel each other and we, we don't have any real power in the received uh, antenna. So the signal actually can be fluctuating according to this the phase. And actually this delay or these paths are different also and it is random. So in, at the receiver side in the, uh, uh, in the uh, band bus, we will have something like that. So th the signal amplitude can be just just like uh, 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 fluctuates according to this random random delay or random phase. Okay, now when, the, when we have, uh, it is called constructive or destructive fading. Once we have destructive fading, then the signal disappears. It becomes like imaginary part of the power only, but we don't have any real power. And when it is constructive, then the signal will be strong. So in that in that sense, uh, uh, the signal sometimes can disappear and we will have outage in this case because we will not be able to communicate between the transmitter and the receiver due to this multipath. Okay, is this the only problem in multipath? No, we have another problem. Another major problem is is that uh, even if the signal, for example, assume that it is not by because this is actually theoretically to be just cancel each other completely. In, in most of the cases or most of the time, both signal will be decoded. And in that case, we will have what is known as intersymbol interference. So this is in the... Uh, 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 in the baseband, in the baseband, when you, when we um, uh, demodulate the first signal and the second signal, then we will have um, uh, uh, different. Uh, the same symbol will be repeated again and again because of the multipath, as we can see. Yeah, so we can see this, for example. So you can see that, and now uh, we send symbol T one. This is in the baseband. And then we send symbol T2 at T2. Okay, so you can see here after some delay, we received the first symbol, but it was not the only one. So after some time, we receive the same symbol again and we receive the same symbol again. And by the way, it, even the delayed version sometimes can be even stronger than the direct uh, received one or the first received one. And now we, when we send the second symbol, you can see that we, the second symbol has uh, like interfered with the uh, first, the one of the delayed first symbols. And then we have other symbols delay, like uh, uh, interfere with, with each other. This problem is called intersymbol interference problem. Intersymbol interference problem. In that case, the the the, the signal uh, quality can be degraded uh, very much be, due to this intersymbol interference. In uh, many times, this intersymbol interference can be even worse than uh, noise and uh, and normal interference because when once we have noise or the signal or or when the SNR is small, what we can do, we can just increase that the transmitting power, for example, or you or using uh, beamforming, as we will see later, or sometimes using some techniques like like uh, uh, interference cancellation. We can improve this SNR in order to improve the quality of the transmission. But because of the intersymbol interference, if you increase the power, for example, if you increase the power in this in this symbol. The power will be increased also for the other symbols, so which means that the, the, this will not handle the problem of the ISI. So we need some, some other way to handle the problem of ISI. Okay, let us go uh, back. Uh, so now this is the problem that we have of the multipath, as we can, as we mentioned. So we have the problem, uh, it has different impacts in the band bus. As we have seen now, that it can be constructive or destructive fading, and also in the baseband by the intersymbol interference. Okay. Um, and because of this multipath, actually we, we don't have only one or two paths. Usually, in 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 wireless communication, we might have uh, like uh, maybe sometimes 10 or more of the significant paths uh, um, 
as I read um, many years ago that the number of baths, uh, total number of baths can reach to up to 80, but but the, the most significant one uh, depends between 5 up to 10. It depends on the carrier uh, frequency and on the environment itself. But due to this many multi baths, when they add it together, then uh, the, the magnitude and those baths have, like, as I said, uh, like uncertainty or, or random process. And in that case, the accumulation of those paths will generate that the amplitude of the received signal to be a random variable and it will follow what is known as Riley distribution. The random signal, the, amp the amplitude of the, of the received signal will be random and it will follow, uh, it can be approved mathematically easily, not, not, not that hard to, to, to prove that it has Riley distribution. Uh, and you might read or uh, uh, sometimes or hear about Riley channel. So Riley channel means that multi-path channel without line of sight, without line of sight. So we, there is no direct connection between the transmitter and the receiver or in other more accurate terms, there is no very strong ray arrive to the signal and the others are small but most of the signals on the average they are like around each other so it is it is not there is no like dominating uh, ba uh, array or dominating path in that case we, we say that we have Riley channel uh, uh, in, in case that we have line of sight so we have one dominating path the, uh, and other uh, much lower paths then we have what is known as Ratian channel Ratian channel. So this is the difference between Ratian channel and Riley channel. Riley channel usually reflects for rich multi-bath environment. Ratian channel is reflects the, the case when we have a line of sight or one dominating bath and uh, other small or lower frequency, uh, lower uh, ba uh, energy baths or uh, less powerful baths. Uh, in case that we have only single bath, so in that case, we have additive white uh, noise channel. It means that we, we ignore this multi-bath impacts or effects, and we consider only the noise, the additive noise, and we don't care into account the multi-bath uh, 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 like uh, impacts on the, on the received signal. Of course, in digital communication, we have to consider the multi-bath because the environment itself is multi-bath environment. But of course, we can use different techniques as we will see them in this, uh, in this part. Well, how to handle these uh, problems of, of, of multi-bath and time-varying channels. Uh, actually, for for the ISI problem, that we we we, we can uh, have uh, some uh, techniques in order to handle this problem. One of them is called uh, equalizers, as we will explain them later. And also, we can use uh, uh, CD CDMA code division multiple access with rake receiver. Also, it is one technique used to handle the ISI. And the third uh, technique is called OFDM, orthogonal division frequency. Uh, uh, multiplexing of the M orthogonal frequency division multiplexing and uh, the, we have different kind of uh, techniques in order to handle this problem of ISI uh, the, remember that the problem of ISI or this multi bath is the main problem that uh, uh, um, prevent us from reaching very high data rate in all systems when we, of course, we, because of the development in technology, now we are able to uh, to achieve even more than one gigabit per second in wireless cellular network. But why it was not possible before, let's say, 20 years or 25 years? One of the major problems is the lack of technology to find how to handle the problem of intersymbol interference. Um, just to mention here that the intersymbol interference that when you send one symbol that the symbols will, will interfere each other and they will destroy each other and uh, 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 in that case the only way to handle this problem that to keep uh, enough uh, time between different symbols so uh, for example if you send this one symbol symbol one then you cannot se send symbol two directly so we need to have some time t and we send symbol two and because of uh, introducing this time what happened we reduce or we slowing down the data rate this is the problem that in all systems that we were not able to send very high data rate because if you send the second symbol here 
it will interfere in the uh, 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 with the first symbol at the receiver side and then the communication will collapse or will uh, fail but by introducing the new technologies as we will see see them this problem has been handled successfully again as i mentioned that the channel itself is time varying which means that um, it is characteristics will will change with time which means that even if we handle the problem of the ice eye we need this uh, equalizer or this system to be time varying also so it will be adaptive system in order to handle the time varying characteristics of the channel okay now let us go through some fading uh, manifestation of the wireless channel uh, we can see here in the fading manifestation that uh, we divide them into two parts first part is related to large scale fading uh, due to motion over large areas and this is as i mentioned because of the uh, like at normal attenuation distance attenuation or because of the shadowing uh, like buildings and so on so in that case we have mean signal attenuation and we we might have some variations about the mean as sorry as for example you uh, enter a building or you get out from that building and uh, or you enter your car or get out of your car so this uh, uh, this will uh, introduce some variations of, about the mean but anyhow all of them they will be large scale fading and now we come to the small scale fading and the small scale fading is due to small changes in in position um, it means that if you change your mobile like few centimeters or even less it will change the characteristics of the channel it depends of course on the carrier frequency and uh, in, in that case uh, this fading and this is the two major uh, uh, like paths of or, or, or two major kinds of fading in the small scale they are time spreading of the signal and time variance of the channel what what they mean the time spreading of the signal it means it means simply that the multipath the multipath so if if you send uh, let's say that you sent this 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 pulse okay you sent this pulse and this pulse ended at let's say time t okay this is the symbol time okay <coughs> sorry so you, you send the signal at time t at the receiver side how you will receive this signal this pulse you will you might receive it something like that this is in time so uh, of course after some delay you start from zero but here let us let, let us say that you start from time tau for example after some delay so the signal will be something like that for example You can see that it is it will arrive in different peaks of course it can be also divided it can be also separated in time but let us take it as simple as this one and then instead of that the symbol will end at time t that it should be at this time ts but actually it will continue until some time ta for example or access time okay so this is a problem so you send this pulse you will receive this pulse what happened what you need to do now one one case that i need to wait before sending the second symbol until this i know that the access time of the channel for example at that much time then i have to wait that time before sending the second the second symbol and this will reduce the throughput this will reduce the data rate of our system this is the, the the major problem so this is called access time and this is the meaning of time spreading of the signal so the, the signal itself it spread over time so it is like a stretching of the signal in time okay and due to the multipath of course in wireless but also we can see this in wireline the same behavior we can see in wireline uh, communication okay now this this uh, uh, process it can be uh, we can describe it in 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 time domain like t time delay we could like time delay domain description and uh, if you take the the, the Fourier transform of this 
of this uh, response, you can also see the problem in a frequency domain. So the problem, it has time domain perspective and frequency domain perspe perspective, but both of them describing the same problem. Okay. Uh, this problem, we can call it divided into two like um, kinds. We call them uh, frequency selective uh, fading, FSF. It is frequency selective fading and flat fading flat fading. What is the difference between them? In the frequency selective fading, if uh, be because the channel itself, if you send the, as we said that the channel itself, it has some access time delay uh, or some access time. So if you send impulse, so it will take time of access time. We can call it, for example, T access, access time. It will take that access time in order to the impulse to vanish or to disappear, okay? So um, if we send our signal with time duration less than this access time, okay, what will happen? Of course, as, as we mentioned before, that if we send it as less than this access time, we send the first uh, like uh, symbol and Directly within the second symbol and the third symbol, all of them within the access time, simply they will interfere with each other at the receiver due to this eyes eye problem. They will cause inter symbol interference. They will interfere with each other in time. And this is called the frequency selective fading. This is called the frequency selective fading. Uh, I will uh, uh, explain why it is called frequency selective fading. But let me first explain the other kind. The other kind is a flat fading. A flat fading simply if you don't want to touch this problem and you decided to send your symbol duration between one symbol to the other symbol to be larger than the access time delay the access time of the channel. In that case, of course, you will send at very low data rate, okay? But in the same time, you will not face the inter-symbol interference. So we will have a flat fading in this case. We call it flat fading, okay? Now, why we call this frequency selective fading and flat fading? Actually, this name comes from after taking the Fourier transform of the signal. When you take the Fourier transform of your data, because your data is high data rate, high data rate, what it means? It means very small, tiny time. But in the frequency, it is wide. It is very wide in the frequency. So in the frequency domain, it will be something like that. It is wide frequency. This is your, your data. Okay. But your channel, and, 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 and in that case, looking to the, uh, to the access time, the access time itself, it has coherence, what is known as the coherence bandwidth. The coherence bandwidth of the channel will be less than the available bandwidth of your data. So the coherence bandwidth, something like that, it is called the FS, the coherence bandwidth, which is actually related somehow to one divided by the time of the access time of the channel. Okay, and this bandwidth is smaller than the, the, the bandwidth of your data. What happened? Your data will see different channel characteristics because the channel is not, is not the same for the whole band of your data. And this will introduce some distortion in your, in your data that cannot be corrected. Uh, without, of course, the, there are some technologies to to correct them. But if you don't, if we don't use any equalizer, then this corruption cannot be like corrected uh, directly. So it will be some kind of of distortion happen due to the fact that that your band, your transmission band, is larger than the coherence bandwidth of the channel. Uh, it is interesting to observe that uh, uh, the coherence uh, uh, bandwidth of the channel uh, uh, is not the available band. This is this is what you should you should take care about this. Um, um, I explain. For example, uh, if you uh, receive uh, permission to use certain band, let's say at maybe two point five giga or two point six gigahertz, and they give you like okay, you can use twenty mega bandwidth. So this twenty mega is for you. But due to the, um, for example, due to the nature of the channel, 
the the coherence bandwidth can be only 20 kilohertz or it can be only 50 kilohertz so how can you handle that you cannot use your 20 mega directly you cannot send your data at 20 like, like 20 megabit per second for example you cannot use that because you have the coherence bandwidth of the channel that it is only let's say 50 kilohertz then if you don't use any technology you have to use this 50 kilohertz data rate otherwise you will end up with this frequency selective fading which means that a lot of corruption a lot of like uh, uh, distortion and destroying of your signal at the receiver side because of the inter symbol interference okay and the flat fading flat fading means that if you send your data rate within the coherence band of the of the channel which means that your data will see almost the same flat uh, frequency of uh, uh, coherence frequency of, of the channel which will be correlated then the whole signal will be correlated in the uh, or will be like distorted or it will be affected in the same manner which means that it is simply you can use very simple receiver or, or, or like one tab equalizer or two tabs equalizer to handle your signal at the receiver. So the flat fading actually is preferred in, 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 from technology point of view, from the simplicity of the receiver, flat fading is much better than the frequency selective fading. Frequency selective fading is much more problems uh, uh, like associated uh, to handle the problem. But... We need to use to use high data rate. We need to transmit our signal at very high data rate. How to handle or to solve this 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 paradox now? How to solve this this problem now? Actually, we have techniques as we mentioned, and we will see, we will see them. Uh, just to to say something now, so uh, keep it in your mind. For example, using uh, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. It means that we take this high data rate of, of, of our signal and we break it down into many small bands and every smaller band, or it is, we call it sub-band, every sub-band should be within the coherence bandwidth of the channel. Then we take all these sub-bands accumulated together, we put them together as because they are orthogonal and send them over the channel. This one technique to solve or to handle this frequency selective fading, which is applied actually in 4G, also uh, some kind of it, uh, but, but not non-orthogonal, non used in 5G. We can use them, uh, most of Wi-Fi technologies using this OFDM, and it is very successful technology to handle the frequency selective fading. Okay. All this discussion is only related to the time spreading of the signal. But the channel, it has also another kind of fading. It has another a, a tricky kind of fading. That The variance of the channel, the channel itself, is time varying. It's changing with time. It's not fixed. Okay? So in that case... We, we, we can describe them also in time domain and the frequency domain. In time domain, it, it can be, uh, we have two kinds, uh, depends on the, uh, on, on your data rate. We, ha we have like uh, fast fading and slow fading. Fast fading and slow fading. Uh, what is the fast fading and slow fading? Uh, um, uh, fast fading, it means that, um, I give you example, if you are in, in, in train, and the train like moving with the, is moving with speed, like, let's say 300 uh, kilometers uh, per hour or, or 350 kilometers per hour, then uh, uh, the channel itself, it will change very fast, okay? And in that case, we, ha we, we, we call this or we can represent this change as Doppler frequency. So this is the Doppler frequency that uh, represents the, the, the changes or how the rate of the change of the channel. So it is called flat, flat fading. In that, in, uh, sorry, it is called fast fading. So the fading is changing very fast, okay? A slow fading means that, that the, the, the fading is, is very slow. Okay, uh, which one is better? Flat fading for us or slow fading? Of course, the slow fading is 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 uh, th that what we like a slow fading fading means that the, the the channel is not changing so fast which means that once we know the channel characteristics we can use it for longer time we can use it with for longer time but if the change the 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 the, uh, the the channel characteristics changing very fast faster than 
the change of the rate of our information, it will be problem. Okay, how to handle this problem? Simply by keeping the change of uh, our symbol rate, our, our data rate, we keep it faster than the change of the channel. So we need to keep that uh, faster than the change of the channel. Otherwise, we will have like a, 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 a non-solvable like fading or, or corruption in our signal. Okay, so we need to have our signal to be faster than the 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 uh, the dynamic changes of the channel. So now we, we can see that we are in between two limits. For example, in off DM, as I mentioned, we uh, we broke our bandwidth into many subbands. So how small that the subband should be? The subband should be small enough. To be to see the flat fading, but it shouldn't be very small. The band to be like like uh, 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 less than the 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 bandwidth of the fast fading. So we sh we should have like faster than the fast fading, and uh, uh, in the same time it should be like lower than the, the uh, I mean the bandwidth lower than the 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 coherence bandwidth in the in the uh, uh, time spreading of the signal. So we need to be in between those two limitations for the time spreading of the signal and the rate of changes of, uh, of the channel. Uh, actually also about the rate, the, the variance uh, of the channel, it can be represented in a frequency domain and also it can be represented in time domain. In time domain, uh, 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 the, the coherence time of the channel is related to 1 divided by the Doppler frequency. So rate to one, if the Doppler frequency is higher, it means that the coherence time will be smaller. And if the, uh, the, the, the Doppler frequency is smaller, then the coherence time will be uh, larger. Uh, so that uh, because this is the coherence time C C T TC of 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 the channel. So if we make that this TC, for example, let's say uh, this is the coherence time, let's say of 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 the channel. Okay, this is one. Uh, this is TC and minus TC, and TC as I said, it is related, not equal, but related to one over the Doppler frequency. Okay, now if uh, our uh, symbol duration is within is less than this TC, smaller than TC, which means that when since it is smaller in time, it means that it is faster in frequency, it is wider in bandwidth. So if it is less than this TC, it means that it will see the same uh, channel characteristics. But if the duration of the symbol is larger than this TC, it means that it will it will see different channel characteristics in the way that it will not be able to be corrected at the receiver so this is the uh, that what what we need to know about the fading channel and i hope that it is it is clear now okay this is what we mentioned about time varying channel so you can see in this figure how that uh, the large scale fading it is it, it the fading is uh, with with distance so you can see that it, uh, it changes slowly but the small scale fading you can see that it changes very very large and remember this is the deci decibel means that 10 decibel change means that 10 times 20 decibel change means that 100 times 40 decimal uh, decibel changes means that 10000 times the difference in in magnitude Okay, we, we describe it actually now this the difference between time varying and multipath fading. Remember, this is the two major different kinds of fading. We have the multipath fading or the spreading in time, and also we have the time varying or the variance of time in the channel. They are not the same. And now we describe it, the flat fading, the frequency selective fading, you can find them on the slides to read it to read them more slow fading and fast fading the difference between between them okay now we come to the part how to use technology to handle this 
uh, the, these problems of multipath and the problems of time varying or time variance of the channel. We have different techniques applied in digital communication in order to make uh, or to handle these problems. And actually, uh, they have been working very well, excellent actually, in order that the, to reach to that uh, performance we can see today that now we can even reach up to 10 gigabit per second in wireless communication which was a dream before 20 years so now we can we can discuss this let, let us um, start this in clip 2 when we talk about equalizers uh, thank you very much and see you in the next clip thank you